Welcome to the Vibrant You podcast. I'm your host, Bindi Stables, and here we talk all things wellness and vibrant living. You'll learn about integrative health, functional medicine, holistic biohacking, and enjoy raw and real conversations on personal growth, mindset, and motivation. Optimize your body and mind and become the happiest, the healthiest, most vibrant you. Enjoy the show. Hello and welcome to another episode of Vibrant You. Today is a wellness episode and we are going to get into my top 10 brain boosting hacks that I swear by for a better mood, for focus, for mental clarity and overall mental performance. I've seen these simple tips work wonders for myself and my clients as well. So these are 10 easy little daily routines or physical practices Uh, wellness habits, or simple mindset shifts to help you optimize your brain, help your mind's ability to adapt to stresses in your everyday life, to support your cognitive health, boost your mental health, your mental energy, and clarity as well. So let's get into it. So my first brain boosting hack for you is simple but so important, and that is hydration. So I always start my day, uh, I make a very nice little natural Gatorade for myself where I add filtered water, I add a squeeze of lemon or lime, and then I add in electrolytes. So that is in the form of very, very simple sea salt or Himalayan salt. You can buy fancy electrolytes, but um, salt has everything that you need. And why hydration and particularly hydration with electrolytes is so key is that our neurons in our brain, our nerve cells, require electrolytes to fire and function optimally. So I add about a quarter teaspoon of Himalayan or sea salt into warm or room temperature water. And I do that first thing in the morning as you know, when you sleep all the night, you lose a lot of water. There's a lot of water loss that happens just through your respiration, through breathing, uh, through sweat, um, and just through your body doing so much metabolic activity as you sleep. So we want to replenish that first thing in the morning and give our brain a nice little boost. And all of the cells in our body need this hydration. So that's what I do first thing in the morning is I hydrate with this natural Gatorade. I also add like half a teaspoon of honey and it makes a really nice lemonade kind of vibe for us. And then usually within the first hour of waking, I have my smoothie, which my brain just loves. I include a whole daily nutritional support shake powder from a great company that I love out of the US called Equal Life. And it has all my daily needed multivitamin and multimineral and amino acids. It's got like 20 grams of protein and all the good things. So I'm getting all those nice nutrients and antioxidants and hydration first thing in the morning. So that's the first brain boosting hack for you is hydrate and hydrate well, of course, first thing in the morning, but throughout the day as well. And a nice last little hack there is to add a little bit of sea salt or Himalayan salt into all of the water that you drink. You never really want to be drinking naked water as it can actually pull more minerals from your body than it will, of course, remineralize our tissues. And that's what we need. Brain boosting hack number two is a lovely one. So this is sunlight exposure. There is so many studies and just so much ancient wisdom behind the healing powers of the sun. And what we want to do is ideally first thing in the morning, when either as soon as we wake up or in the first hour of waking, we want to go outside and view natural light. This can be as little as two minutes. It can be up to 30 minutes, ideally with no sunglasses. And in the early morning, we want this sunlight in our eyes. We're not looking directly into the sun, like we don't want to burn our retinas, that would not be good. But just having natural light into our eyes and maybe even on our skin as well. What this does is it's basically the light of the sun is signaling to through our eyes, creating a whole cascade of events inside of our body, sending messages to our body system saying, okay, it's, it's daytime, it's time to be awake, and it signals to our hormones, our cortisol, to wake up, which is our cortisol is a stress hormone, but we also need it, uh, especially in the earlier hours of the day for wakefulness, for alertness, for motivation. 
early morning sunlight is one of the best things that you can do. It doesn't need to be a big deal. Like I know some of you are like, but I leave my work in the dark. How am I supposed to get sunlight? And we just do our best, even if it's just like having your morning cup of coffee in your window, just to get that light in your eyes. Or if not, okay, then your earliest break at work, get outside if you can and get some light. Um, this is going to boost your neurons ability to create this uh, sense of wakefulness, of motivation and focus. Okay, uh, biohack number three to boost your brain is to follow your brain's natural cycles. So your brain is remarkably intelligent and I don't just mean cognitively like yes that too you're brilliant but what I mean is like as an organ your brain as a force of nature with all of our body systems we want to work with nature we don't want to fight against our nature. (laughs) So your brain has innate ability and innate times during the day where naturally mental load is more easeful than others. There's times of the day, times of even the month for women where we are just designed to be doing more mental work than others. So our brains and our bodies actually have three main biological rhythms or timing cycles. And I'm sure that we'll do a full episode on this because it's just so interesting to understand our natural cycles that our body goes through. But real quick, the three main biological rhythms or timing cycles that our body goes through is the circadian rhythm, the ultradian rhythm, and the infradian rhythm. So circadian rhythm is our body's 24-hour clock. That governs our sleep-wake cycle. It governs Uh, our cortisol rhythms, our body's ability to produce serotonin, our daytime happiness chemical, and melatonin, our evening time deep sleep neurotransmitter and chemical. We also have our ultradian rhythm, and this is a less than 24-hour cycle. We go through many functions that operate on an ultradian rhythm each day. This is, you know, our different stages of sleep and our appetite, our pulse, right, which is beating every second, our heartbeat. This is an ultradian rhythm. And certain times of our day, we're going to be more designed to be productive and effective and where our brains are at its peak. So knowing what those cycles are is really valuable. And then finally, and this is especially for female bodies, is the infradian rhythm, Infradian rhythm means biological cycles or rhythms that happen in a more than 24-hour window. So your menstrual cycle, the seasons of nature, anything that's longer, a biological event that's happening longer than 24 hours, such as the four stages of your menstrual cycle, is this infradian rhythm. So by following our natural cycles of our brain, We can start to optimize our cognition. We can optimize our focus, our mood, our mental clarity, our mental performance by following and taking advantage of these natural cycles taking place within you versus working against them. And that starts with understanding what those are. So basically the circadian rhythm sets us up where our peak performance hormones are highest in the morning. In our 24-hour cycle, we go through a beautiful series of hormonal events where first thing in the morning, our cortisol, our, yes, stress, but also motivation and get stuff done kind of hormone is highest in the morning. So it peaks at around, it it depends where we live and what our sleep-wake cycle is, but let's say generally in what I see on most lab tests is that it increases overnight. It will peak between 6 and 9 a.m. and then it wanes in a healthy cortisol rhythm. It will wane all day until about 9 p.m. So we should biologically wake up with our highest energy in the morning. It should slowly wane throughout the day. So does our focus and our motivation. So getting things done that need to be done first thing in the morning biologically sets us up for more success, for more focus and more ease and getting those mentally demanding tasks done. Your ultradian rhythm goes through peaks and falls of 90 minute windows of high motivation, focus and performance, and then windows of lower. What you may notice throughout your day is that there's kind of these like waves, these ups and downs, these highs and lows of your motivation and your energy. Listen to that. We're not meant to be on all the time. We're not designed to be in a constant state of performance and productivity. So listen to those when you're naturally feeling focus peak, follow it, channel it, use it. And when not, then give yourself permission to rest. And then finally, with our infradian rhythm, 
especially for menstruating women, is this infradian rhythm is an amazing little biohack to understand your menstrual cycle and how your focus and your motivation shifts throughout these four phases of your menstrual cycle throughout a month or a you know 28 or however many days your menstrual cycle is. So your focus and your motivation is biologically highest based on your hormones around ovulation. So around ovulation is a great time to focus on things and events that really require your full presence, your full focus, your productivity, your get stuff done kind of vibe. And then the superpower as we get closer to menstruation is that around menstruation is when you actually have this superpower of critical thinking and data analysis. We'll do a full episode, I'm sure, and probably many on the menstrual cycle and the different superpowers and and how to biohack and how to understand your hormones and unlock your feminine advantage through these ways. But I just share that generally so that we can start to follow our brain's natural cycles, work with our nature based on the 24-hour cycles we go through, the smaller cycles in our everyday and these longer cycles such as our menstrual cycle. Okay, so the next biohack for brain boosting is movement. So movement is a wonderful thing. Exercise, moving your body. And of course, we know that when we move our body, we have this beautiful release of endorphins and neurotransmitters like our motivation chemical, dopamine, our happiness chemical, serotonin, our calming chemical, GABA. So I love research. I kind of nerd out, I geek out a little bit on studies and research. And what I have found through my research is exercise beats medication in almost every study that I've read in terms of effectiveness to overcome symptoms of anxiety or depression. And I'll try as well to link up in the show notes a beautiful study or two for you, for my fellow um, biological nerd geeks out there that appreciate that stuff. And of course, what we know about movement and exercise is that it increases blood flow to the brain. Our brain loves blood flow. It loves the nutrition that comes with blood flow. When we're exercising, we're oxygenating the body. We're getting this through breathing more deeply. We beautifully oxygenate our blood. It travels to our brain, to all of our tissues. It increases our physical energy. So this is kind of cool. When we weight train or when we put more physical demand on our muscles through exercise and movement, our cells, this little mitochondria, this organelle that produces energy or ATP uh, in the cells actually increases. It gets bigger, it gets stronger. So as we exercise and build our physical muscles, we're also building our cellular energy productions capacity. All of that to say, when you exercise, your body starts to physically create more energy and more resilience to stress, both during and not during exercise. So we get beautifully improved brain health, we get longevity, we improve our nutrient uptake. So when we exercise, we're stimulating our digestive system, we get better um, absorption of our nutrients that our brain needs to do its job really well. So what can this look like in the ideal world? So ideally we want to be combining strength work with endurance work and something is better than nothing. So I always say like, even if you have five minutes, you're still going to get a little brain boost. That's my daily commitment to myself is even just five minutes of movement, ideally first thing in the morning. And then three to four times a week, maybe hitting the gym or doing a longer yoga practice or going to Pilates or whatever it is that you like. Ideally, we want to do about 45 to 60 minutes, not too long, not too short. Uh, We want to have moderate intensity. So we're, of course, moving our body and feeling it and getting on a sweat, but not going to failure and like burning ourselves out with it. So whatever that looks like for you, if you want to first thing in the morning, do a few rounds of sun salutation or go for a nice walk or do some yoga. And then maybe a few times a week, you do some even just body weight exercises at home, like squats or push-ups, jumping jacks, those types of things. But the essence of all this to boost your brain and get all these amazing benefits is simply to move your body. Brain boosting hack five is white noise. All frequencies of sound mixed up randomly. This is what white noise really is. Uh, You've heard like, you know, you can just Google or YouTube uh, white noise tracks, probably on Spotify. There's lots of different playlists like that. 
But what it is is that it's all these different sound frequencies mixed up randomly. And our brain, the research says, our brain seems to really love this. And you've probably felt it, you know, uh, when you've been studying or you're trying to get into a workflow and you turn on a white noise, either machine or playlist or something like that. It helps you to get into that flow state. So when we're working with white noise, we want to typically have it turned on a low volume, ideally no headphones, um, and it helps our brain get into that state where it's really open for learning and workflow. White noise, it'll stimulate the areas of the brain for cognition and for focus and, and memory. And it also stimulates, surprisingly, through the research, dopamine, which is that beautiful, delicious motivation chemical. Yeah, it supports our levels of focus and it's really just good for our brain. So white noise. Number six brain boosting hack is to eat for your brain. So brain food. We need nourishment for our brain to function optimally. You already knew that. But what we might not know is that there's specific nutrients and specific foods that are designed to boost your cognitive performance, your mood, your mental clarity. So our neurons need and love nutrition. And we talked about the importance of electrolytes, you know, adding a pinch of salt into your water. But all of these nutrients in the form of vitamins and minerals and amino acids, essential fatty acids, all of these things really support our healthy functioning brain. As well as the timing of when we eat. So have maintaining like regular meals and having a stable blood sugar is surprisingly supportive. And I am obsessed with this piece and I would love to share more specifically on the cognitive effects of instable blood sugar and the importance of keeping our blood sugar nice and stable for optimal cognitive and mental health. That's a whole other conversation. So having regular meals throughout the day to ideally keep our blood sugar nice and stable as our blood sugar kind of like peaks and falls throughout the day. So let's talk stimulants for a sec. So stimulants in one way, things like coffee and caffeine, yes, they can be supportive, but it's often associated with a crash as well. So if you're wanting to work with caffeine, I'll do a whole episode on how to consume caffeine in the most optimal way where it has, uh, where you can actually access the benefits of it versus it depleting your system. Um, but basically you want to have it with food if you're having caffeine. So it's not such a shock to your nervous system. And ideally you want to have it with food so that it slows the absorption of that caffeine as well. It's not just like hitting your nervous system and, um, and then putting you into that kind of burnout state. So nice balanced meals where you have a balance of healthy carbohydrates, which our brain uses for fuel. Our brain's primary fuel source is sugar, glucose. And so we don't want to do these like low carb meals. We want to have a balance of healthy carbohydrates or starches with uh, balanced proteins. We get our nice amino acid profile with healthy fiber, with healthy fat, all the goods. Nourish your brain with food. Biohack number seven for boosting your brain is supplements. So I'm a big fan of nutritional supplements. And when it comes to our cognitive well-being and performance and focus, if you are experiencing any issues like a lot of brain fog or like really low energy, or it's really hard to focus, hard to concentrate, your memory has reduced, maybe like decision making feels difficult, or you're just being a little bit more forgetful than usual. As an integrative health practitioner, we always want to look at the root cause first. Well, what's the underlying root cause imbalances that are maybe causing that brain fog and that low energy and lack of focus to begin with, as there can be a whole cascade of things going on beneath the surface, like an imbalance in your gut microbiome or hormonal imbalances or uh, the buildup of toxicities or heavy metals. All of these can be very common root causes behind cognitive concerns. However, if that's not the issue for you and you're just looking for ways to boost your overall brain health, to keep your brain at its peak, to optimize your cognitive health and cognitive performance, here are a few key supplements that I personally love. So brain boosting supplements. Number one, it's not very sexy, but it is the most important. If you are only to do one supplement for your mental health, it's a multivitamin. So a full broad spectrum, ideally activated or methylated form of a multivitamin that has all your daily recommended vitamins and ideally minerals or trace minerals, that would be number one. 
as your brain isn't deficient in herbs, right? Like, yes, there's amazing herbs for your cognitive health. And, you know, we'll talk about what those are. But if you have nutritional deficiencies and your brain isn't getting all of the raw nutrients that it needs to do its job really well, then those herbs won't have the same effect, we'll say. So number one, multivitamin. Number two, these are kind of in order of priority, trace minerals. So either, you know, salt, <laughs> uh, or you can get a really great mineral or multi-mineral supplement. Omega-3s. So omega-3s with ideally a thousand milligrams of EPA. You can get this in the form of a fish oil or ve vegan vegetarian sources through algae. And omega-3s are beautifully protecting for the brain. They support our brains, our neurons' ability to channel messages and to activate the neurons at the deepest level. Next is brain-boosting nutrients like acetyl-L-carnitine, which is an amazing amino acid that supports brain function, or a uh, beautiful chemical or phospholipid called phosphatidylserine. Um, there's also amazing herbs like Bacopa. There's been studies that show that it's been proven to improve memory and attention, our ability to process information, or a very famous herb in Chinese medicine anyway, ginseng, which is very brain protecting. It supports mental clarity, our attention, our ability to process information, cognitive performance. A beautiful herb, lemon balm. I grow it in my garden and I love it as well as go to cola. Those are the two that I grow in my garden here in Bali. Um, and both these herbs, lemon bulb and go to cola, they support GABA production, which supports a healthy mood. And then finally, a, a really great herb is ginkgo biloba, which is known to produce mental energy, clarity, and focus. So I'll do a full episode on nutritional supplements for mental health, cognitive health, as there's so much that we could get into here and all the nuances of it. But for now, I'll leave it at that. And maybe what I'll do is I'll link up my favorite brain boosting supplements in the show notes. And yeah, you'll be able to find a little bit more insights into what I personally use, what I recommend for my clients and where it could be a good start for you. Brain boosting hack number eight is epic sleep and relaxation. Nothing beats a good night of sleep for mental and cognitive health. So these are both sleep in terms of eight hours of epic deep sleep at night and having a proper sleep routine to help you unwind well, but also non-sleep deep rest protocols. We call these NSDRs, non-sleep deep rest protocols such as meditation, yoga nidra, napping, hypnosis, breath work, anything that helps to stimulate that state of conscious deep rest works wonders for our brain. So I know for myself, I enhance my productivity and my mental performance and my mental clarity and my mental focus by knowing that I don't need to be in that hyper performance state all the time. I don't strive for it. And what I do strive for is creating a balance of time on, like brain on and brain off mode. And I'm a big fan of turning my brain off. Sometimes when we think of rest and relaxation, we kind of think of these more like veg out activities, like laying on the couch and scrolling on the gram or like turning on Netflix or, you know, those types of things. But we want opportunities for our brain to deeply relax to get into that really juicy relaxation state while remaining awake and alert and this works wonders for our brain and by properly turning our brain off with eight hours of sleep at night and even as little as 15 minutes a day that's my personal goal for myself and what I recommend for my clients is take 15 minutes a day to hang out in this beautiful blissed out relaxation state you can do whatever you want you can do some yin yoga, you can put your legs up the wall, you can take a 15 minute nap, you can have a bath, whatever you want, but whatever gets your nervous system into that nice deep sleep or uh, deep relaxation, deep rest mode is going to work wonders for your stress hormones and balancing focus, productivity, and performance. Brain hack number nine is, I love this one, eliminating decision fatigue. What is decision fatigue? But decision fatigue is a term that was coined through this understanding of our brain that we only have so much mental capacity every single day to make decisions. And what happens is, is in today's world, we have so many decisions to face in our everyday life, right? Like I remember the first time that I was really aware of decision fatigue and what 
it was like, <laughs> uh, was I was in Starbucks. This was like more than 10 years ago when I used to live in Canada and, um, being in Starbucks. And I remember looking at the menu and like, I'm not a Starbucks person. Like I didn't grow up with Starbucks. I'm not a coffee drinker. I didn't really know what I was doing. Like, I don't know how to order. I don't know what the sizes mean. What is a venti? What is a grande? Whatever these things are. And there's so many bloody options that my brain was like in a pure state of overwhelm, just like observing all the possibilities of drinks that I could have all of the options <laughs> and I was in this like analysis paralysis decision fatigue state where my brain was just like so burnt out from all the options and what happens is is that when we invest so much mental energy into these like little decisions like which latte should I have <laughs> then we really eliminate our bodies our brains capacity for these important big decisions for creative thinking for innovation for you know big moves in our work or big moves in our in our relationship so one of the best things we can do is to eliminate this decision fatigue by simplifying our life so I have for myself a series of just non-negotiable things that are pre-decided predetermined that do not take any of my mental energy anymore for myself, I have a to-do list. Like I don't need to know, I don't need to overanalyze like what I'm doing for the day because the previous day me had a list. And as things came up, I have an ongoing to-do list that I just know what my, I just know how I'm going to flow through my day. There's a few things that are just like non-negotiable for me. So, um, for example, I just wake up at six o'clock. The day before or the morning of, I'm not deciding what time should I wake up. It's just automatic. I have one alarm on my phone, 6 a.m. My body usually wakes up on time anyway. So I'm not like deciding what time should I wake up. I, non-negotiable, I go to the gym every other day. I don't need to like wake up and hum and haw about it. Should I go to the gym? Should I not? It's like, no, nope, you didn't go yesterday. So you're going today. It's, you know, 6.30, 7 a.m. That's just where I'm at. I'm at the gym moving my body within the first hour of waking or as soon as I get home from the gym, I drink a smoothie. This is just a non-question for me anymore. You just, what do you have for breakfast? You don't think about it. You don't need to decide. You don't need to exert your mental energy. You just have a smoothie. These are the types of things that we can just have non-negotiables for ourselves where we don't need to exhaust our mental energy. Should I do this? Should I not do it? Because it really just, it depletes our brain. Our brain doesn't like wasting so much mental energy on the humming and hawing of what should I do. And we can really free up our mental energy and mental performance in prioritizing our energy to actually do the thing versus deciding what to do. So I'm curious, what are some things that you can eliminate decision fatigue for in your life, whether that's with meal planning or with supplements or with to-do lists or with your work or with your kids how can you just simplify things and make things automatic non-negotiable on the schedule or on the calendar and free up your mental energy okay number 10 the final brain boosting hack for you is to feel your feelings so you can be eating all of the right foods, you can be hydrating well, you can be exercising every day, you can do all these biohacking things, but if you're not taking care of your emotions and what's going on between you know, the four walls of your mind, all of these other things won't have the same effect. All of these things in your inner and outer world that contribute to these emotions, we've got to take care of those. So feel your feelings. You're not going to feel on top of the world all the time. You're not going to feel ultra productive and you're not always going to be at your peak because you're human and you're not supposed to. The contradiction of this is that somehow by feeling our feelings and going into our sadness and our fears and our concerns and lovingly holding ourselves through those experiences frees up our nervous system from holding on to those emotions that have been suppressed or kind of pushed down and when we feel those feelings we heal those feelings and we release that dense stuck stored heavy energy in our nervous system that has maybe been a big cause of our brain fog and our fatigue and these types of things so feel your feelings have regular moments to just check in with yourself feel what you got to feel knowing that it's temporary that those hard things they will pass and somehow, by feeling those feelings, you are freeing your nervous system up to have greater focus and mental clarity and performance. 
So these are my top 10 brain boosting hacks for better mood, focus, and performance from hydration to sunlight exposure to following your brain's natural cycles, movement, moving your body, using white noise to get in that flow state, nourishing your brain with brain food, nutritional supplements, epic sleep and relaxation, eliminating decision fatigue, and feeling yo feelings. That's where it's at. So that's all for now. I would love to hear your top takeaways from this episode over on Instagram at Bindi Stables. Send me a DM or join in the conversation in the comments on my latest post. And I'm sending you so much love. I'm wishing you a beautiful day and I'll see you back here real soon with another episode. Take care. Thanks so much for listening. If you loved today's episode, please spread the love by subscribing and leaving a review. Or if there's someone in your life that you think could benefit from this conversation, please share this episode with them. I would love to hear from you over on Instagram at Bindi Stables or visit my website, bindistables.com to connect and work with me. Thank you so much again for being here and I'm celebrating you in this journey of becoming the happiest, the healthiest, most vibrant you.